Before we move any further, we are going to have Caitlin Cuvier come out and uh, offer the land recognition here, Indigenous land recognition, um, and then she'll introduce. Hi. <laughs> How lovely she is. Bonjour and hello. <laughs> Welcome to the best night. I love these nights because you get to see such an eclectic array of dance. Um, when I was asked to do the land acknowledgement this time, I had spoken to two elders who have become family for me since moving to Treaty 7 territory. And sometimes land acknowledgements can be so flippant. They're like a check mark that we click off the box and feel really good about ourselves because we've acknowledged the land properly and now we can move on with the festivities. Um, but the elders that I was speaking to told me that it's important to tell a story of the land because there is the saying that we are all treaty people, but that does not entirely include every indigenous population. For instance, the Lakota, who were refugees with Sitting Bull, who came to Alberta, they were never given treaty status in Canada, although they have rights to land as they were welcome guests of the Blackfoot Confederacy. One of the stories that the elders told me was about the names of our Treaty 7 Blackfoot Confederacy and where they came from. We have the Siksika, the Bigani, the Gaina, or the Blood Tribe, and the Small Robes. The small robes you may not have heard of as they went extinct a long time ago due to colonization. When the elder was telling me this story, he said that we're all Blackfoot, we're all Blackfeet. And these names were actually inside jokes between members of the tribes. For the Six Sika who would come to the, to the uh, sun dance, they would cross over the plains that had just been freshly burned and their feet would be black. And so they'd say, huh, Six Sika, Blackfeet. When the Gaina came, a lot of the Gaina warriors would have these elaborate headdresses, which made them look like they were all chiefs. <laughs> and so Gaina means many chiefs, as in, you guys got a lot of chiefs. <laughs> the Pigani, also known as the scabby robes, because one time the ladies had to very quickly make hide out of, well, what was left from the buffalo hunt, and unfortunately they left pieces of fat on the hides and those turned scabby and when they showed up to the sun dance everybody, everyone made fun of their scabby robes. And the small robes lived in a valley with very small game and so they were called the small robes. This area is full of so many stories like these because in indigenous culture and spirituality everything has a story. Everything is full of gratitude. Nothing is taken without having been honored and received in a spirit of interconnectedness and community. It's not only like that between one another, as in I see your spirit, it is the spirit between the land, it is the spirit between the cosmos, it is the spirit of all consciousness, of humanity and our creation. Everything has to be intentional, because we've been going quite a long way without intentionality and it's not really working out that great for us. So, without further ado, I'm so proud to say and to welcome you all to this amazing event on Treaty 7 land. And in doing so, I would like to acknowledge the Siksika, the Bigani, the Gaina. I would also like to acknowledge the small robes who are no longer with us. I would like to acknowledge Métis Region 3, who have made this land their home, as well as all people who've made their home in Mokinstis, which is what the Blackfoot call Calgary, as it means elbow, or the Elbow River. And I am extremely proud because the two dancers who are going to be here are my students. <laughs> I work at a high school, and these two phenomenal young women inspire me daily with their spirit and their courage and their desire to make this world a better place. They are two of the most compassionate individuals I have ever met, and I learn as much from them as they do from me, I'm sure. And in introducing them, we spoke backstage, and the girls wanted me to explain the history of these dances. You know, Things like smudging, which have now become quite uh, popular, have been co-opted. Things like these dances, which entertain us, or drum-making workshops and these things. These 
were illegal for First Nations people to do not that long ago. We only benefit as a broader community because elders faced persecution and arrest and hid these traditions for years until 40 years ago. And it's really important that we honor that these girls are a testament to that resiliency. And when they dance, they're dancing for their ancestors who were brave enough to keep those traditions alive. Bailey Vasquez Fox is going to be dancing a fancy dance. And the fancy dance is, well, the emergence of the butterfly, which is represented by the shawl. And Chandra Fox will be dancing the jingle dress dance, which is a healing dance. And any time those ladies come out, you know that things are about to go down. <laughs> Usually they're at the protest pipelines. <laughs> so without further ado, Chi Miigwech, which is Anishinaabe thank you from my territory in Robinson Superior. I would like to introduce you to Bailey and Chandra. We are the tribe that they cannot see. We live on an industrial reservation. We are the Halusa Nation. We have been called the Indians. We have been called Native Americans. We have been called Hasa. We have been called Navy. We have been called Nauti. We have been called many names. We are Halusa Nation. We are the human beings. Hey! 